Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the importance of African American history at the 21st century. And we have with us to talk about the importance of the African American history experience at the 21st century, uh, Dr. E.K. Sanford uh, from uh, Tennessee State University. And of course, Dr. Sanford, let me welcome you to the show this morning. And I know that uh, you're no stranger yes. to any members of uh, our audience. You've been us with us on a number of occasions. And I, I'm glad to uh, have you here today to talk about the significance of the African American history experience at the 21st century. And so let's start off by having you to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of leading you, leading you to us this morning, and then we'll talk about other things. Okay, well thank you very much, and it's always a pleasure to be here. Again, I'm E. Kelly Sanford. I'm a professor of sociology at Tennessee State University, and I did my doctorate degree at Howard University in Washington, D.C as well as a postdoc at Penn State University. One of my positions that I've held in the past that I think is very significant and related to today's topic is being director of Africana Studies at the University of Montana in Missoula, Montana, where there was a very strong aim at that university as one of its missions to understand the importance of African American and other minority groups history. So I think that is something in my particular past that makes it relevant for me to be here today. But in addition to that, I would like to say, in reference to that, I have a specialization in looking at um, the African American experience, the history of it, understanding certain social issues and problems related to racism, minority group problems, health and wellness, and disparities that might lead to high crime rates within the American society in which we live. So I think this whole idea that what we're talking about today, the significance of African American history is very important because it is indeed something that we all should share in and understand from an earlier age to the present as well as in the future. You know, as a matter of fact, this is the uh, beginning of the African American history experience known as the uh, African American History Month. And yes. you might uh, say a word or two in reference to the African American History yes. Month, uh, uh, Dr. Sanford, okay. and then we'll get into uh, why uh, African American history is important. Mm -hmm. But let's okay. start off by having you to say something about okay. Okay. why this month of February is important. Okay, and I would like to try to um, give significant credit to Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Mm -hmm. He was the one that really invented the importance of having African American history, and it was a day, having African American history today. And, um, and Dr. Carla G. Woodson felt very strongly that it was important at that particular time to then um, have something that would give everyone within a society and culture in which we live in some idea about the contributions that African Americans have made from slavery to freedom. And then, of course, it turned into African American History Week and that went on for the longest time, and now indeed is African American History Month. And in many institutions of higher education, many other industries, economic business, they will give actually some significance and time to, to talk about the contributions of African Americans uh, this particular month. And so it's very significant and important to do that. And it's, it's a welcoming thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping today we can get into how it is still relevant and important or significant today mm -hmm. as it was a long time ago um, when the miseducation of the Negro was um, written um, many, many years ago and how the importance of having African American history um, month, week, day is important and even throughout the year because it helps us to have a pretty good understanding about ourselves, the culture, and for other groups to have a significant understanding of that population as well. As a matter of fact, I think as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson believed yeah. that unless we had an, uh, 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 the understanding of all uh, ethnic groups within yeah. the United States, we really wouldn't have a, a, a good understanding of what America is all about. Yeah, and I think that uh, the ability to sort of carve out Mm -hmm. In this particular month, it's not to say that uh, uh, African Americans are more important than any other ethnic mm -hmm. group, and et cetera, and et cetera, but I think it does give us an opportunity to highlight, yes. as you've indicated, uh, the African American experience in uh, the United States. Yes. And, uh, and I think, as you indicated earlier, from slavery yes. 
to freedom. Yes. See, we were the only uh, group that uh, were slaves in yes, a real right. sense in America. And so Absolutely. I think that our story is especially good. And so what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial break, and then we'll come back and we'll allow you to uh, talk about the importance of the African-American history experience. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. I see they're building the uh, African-American history oh, structure down in right. on Jefferson, oh, on, uh, yeah. 8th and Jefferson. Yes. Area. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Like it's going to be quite a, a, a large building. It really I'm, is. I was impressed by yeah. what I see, the structure of yeah. it going up. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... Ready when you all are. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. E.K. Sanford, a professor at uh, Tennessee State University, and he's given us some information in, uh, in reference to the significance of the African American history experience. Uh, doctor, let's see if we can pick up and uh, give you an opportunity over the next eight minutes okay. simply to talk about some of the things that, uh, in a real sense, you teach yes. daily uh, at uh, Tennessee State University, some of the okay. uh, sociological information that our audience might not be familiar with. Okay. Well, thanks so much again. And I, and I say that in reference to African American History Month and the significance of it. We can be thinking about any social issue or concern that might be quite relevant within the society in which we live in, within the culture. And Dr. E.B. Taylor defined culture as that complex whole mm -hmm. that entitled or encompass customs and traits and anything that could be passed down from one generation to the next generation to the present. So when we think in terms of the importance of African American history, it is quite significant to understand the past, 244 years of enslavement and how did that impact the culture of a particular population as it did Native Americans and other ethnic groups that migrated to the United States. But as was said in the first segment, something unique was about the African and African American experience here in America that enslavement took place for that time. So if we understand in the context of culture, one can see how something that's supposed to be passed down from one generation to the next generation was destroyed in any positive way. And that was strategically done in an effort to kind of control a group of people to enslave them. And there's much literature out there that one can um, bring up and discuss uh, and, and, and then look at that. And, and I think one of the significant reasons we have African American History Month or a day or a week, how it should be a very much a part of the educational curriculum so that people can have a focus or idea about that legacy of that culture that was passed down or not in a fair way passed down from one generation to the next generation that could lead into certain thoughts about policies in the present. For instance, on many of our shows, we have talked about the significant amount of, of crime that exists in America. Mm -hmm. We have, for instance, 6.5% of African American males that make up the entire population, but 40.2% are actually in prison. Incarcerated. Incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So when we look back at um, Dr. Charcy McIntyre's classic book in, entitled Criminizing a Race, mm -hmm. she looked at it from slavery as coming out of slavery into reconstruction and how people were re-entered into the prison system. Mm -hmm. And now we have the industrial prison complex where even today 40.2 percent of African American males are in prison while they only make up about 6.5 percent of the entire American population. Mm -hmm. So we can see these disparities, Good. but we have to systematically understand how they were connected to the past. That's why it is important to understand um, African American history and kind of connect it to what has happened or not happened fairly over a particular time period. So when we look at 
social structure, all of the institutions that make up the society, we can connect back early and see how there were a lot of dysfunctions for this segment of the population that was supposed to be passed down from one generation to the next generation, but it was all unfair. So when we look at disparities and statistics today or, or social problems and issues that confront us with that particular ethnic group, you can see why if we can understand how it's connected to what happened in the past to the very present. And that's not to say that a lot of positive things have not improved. With, with the advent of moving out of Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896, that was a law of the land to keep things segregated, separate but, mm -hmm. separate but equal, mm -hmm. that moved into 1954, given that we are talking about African American History Month with um, Thurgood Marshall, who that became a Supreme Court Justice mm -hmm. that helped fight that and to overturn the Plessy case because it was inherently biased and unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And that helped people move forward in a very positive way. However, given the legacy, it also caused a lot of inequity within families who would not have had education, that could not have socialized the next generation in the same way that the dominant group could. So there was an infiltration from the 50s to the 60s as the civil rights movement took place, to the 70s with the Black Power movement, the Black Panther movement, to the 80s and with affirmative action. And now you have the millennials born in the 90s who might have this sense that they don't have any connection to what happened in the past or what's going on right now. And that is very relevant and important for groups of people to know the history, as well as the dominant group. And everyone who's improving, going into law, becoming a congressman or a senator, or even a president, to understand that interconnectedness. Because it's in that connecting those dots of what happened to the past to the present that gives us some understanding of what's going on right now in the present. As a matter of fact, uh, I, as, as you made those statements, I was thinking that that's essentially what uh, Dr. Woodson uh, yes, was it. talking about, Carter G. Woodson was yes. talking about. That is, unless we understand and we see the situation of Africans within yeah. the context of the American experience, then we really don't understand what America is all about. Mm, and, I, and I think that I, I like that statement, yes. those statements there. Yes. And, and, and just go on and develop it as, okay. you, as you so desire. Okay, and, and that's so true, but it's important n not only for all ethnic groups, because mm -hmm. when we talk about African American history, we're talking about a fairness within curriculum. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that I'd actually worked on as a movement mm -hmm. in diversity in higher education. Mm -hmm. And that became institutionalized throughout America that with the hopes that in elementary, junior high, high school, mm -hmm. and curriculums in higher education would move toward much more information related to diversity. Mm -hmm. Um, among all ethnic groups. I teach a class that's called Minority Group Problems, mm -hmm. where we can have a pretty good understanding of every minority group and what are some of the systematic injustices that might occur within the society that might prevent fairness. Mm -hmm. And some of this might be related to illness, mm -hmm. health and wellness, such as obesity rates mm -hmm. or heart attacks or high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Some of those things can come from the invisible nature mm -hmm. of um, oppression and then cause depression and stress that might cause one ethnic group to unfairly have to experience it in comparison to another. We even look at social class differences, how you can have some who are in the, in the upper class and, um, to, the, to the upper middle class across all ethnic groups that might have the systems that are present in society in a much fairer way might have better health and wellness, mm -hmm. while those in the lower class and in poverty might be born into a particular situation that would influence certain behaviors, mm -hmm. and that behavior might lead, lead to high crime rates, you know, um, overweight and obesity, mm -hmm. and, and deaths. Very good. And, and so what we'll do, Doctor, we'll take our second commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. What do you want to talk about this segment? Okay, well, we'll try to bring in some clothes. This is the last segment, right? Yeah, uh, so I talk about it in general, play a little historical context, bring up this is African American History Month, uh, for people that have contributed to African American history, okay. and they kind of lead it into 
um, um, some solutions and what we yeah. have to do, that yeah. type of okay. thing. Okay, very good. Uh-huh. Brady, what do you offer? We're ready. <clears throat> Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. E.K. Sanford from uh, Tennessee State University, and he's given us some information in reference to the significance of the African-American experience in American history. And I think, Doctor, mm -hmm. you've already given us a good overview yes. in terms of uh, the experience, some of the experiences of the uh, African-American in American history. And I think that uh, one of the things that, that you talked about has to do with the institution of slavery. Yes. And as long as we understand, I'll get a better understanding, we can understand some of the issues that Africans have to uh, face and how we have been able to, what, overcome a number of things. Let's pick yes, up yes. Uh, where you would like to okay. do in this last segment. All right, and I would like to try to suggest that there's a reoccurring pattern, I feel, um, of those millennials that are born into the 90s uh, up to the present and, 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 and coming forth. The parents have to be vigilant mm -hmm. and understand that they need to try to help this generation and those to follow of the importance of understanding the history mm -hmm. and the backdrop, if you will, of not only all ethnic groups, but African Americans in particular. And not only African Americans, but every group of people that live in America, even that come here, that should be something that is very significant mm -hmm. for them to understand because we were such a, 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 a part of the very fabric of mm -hmm. the development of the American society. And we are the only ones that have yes. been described as a peculiar uh, you know, people. That's you right. See, and that's slavery right. made that that's for right. us. Nobody else no had to undergo some yeah, slavery. Yeah, that's right. And, and so, since you brought that up, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kenneth Stamp mm -hmm. has his excellent book that was entitled title, The Peculiar the Institution. institution. Uh -huh. And um, in that piece, he talks about that whole idea of, of grabbing a group of people by the millions and bringing them and stripping them of their culture. Mm -hmm. And that's why I brought that definition of it up earlier, mm -hmm. because when you take away the culture, you're taking away the very core mm -hmm. of a group of people. Mm -hmm. But to control a group, that's what you would want to do. Mm -hmm. So this, this is still out there, and it's important for people to know it. Not only that group mm -hmm. of uh, millennials need to be refreshed on it, but the dominant group needs to know it too. Mm -hmm. And only so you can have a decent conversation mm -hmm. about the very fabric mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Now, if we think in terms of Alex de Tocqueville, mm -hmm. he had a classic piece that was entitled Democracy in America. Mm -hmm. And he was a French philosopher, and when he came to America, he would thought that, hey, America had this great penal or prison system, mm -hmm. and it was highly advanced in comparison to the, quote, old world at that mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. France. But as he came to this country and was driving in, down in his horse and buggy and looked out the window, he mm -hmm. saw people of African descent mm -hmm. that were enslaved, in shackles, and working. And when he saw that and thought about the, oh my gosh, they have been here for hundreds of years mm -hmm. and there is still there, mm -hmm. he reached in that classic piece that we would never reach a true democracy mm -hmm. because of how it was founded on slavery. Mm -hmm. So when we look at some of the repercussions based on his philosophy and theoretical framework, we can see a lot of the inequalities that still exist today. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important to understand African American history within the context of the American society so everyone mm -hmm. can have an inclusive way of understanding social problems and issues mm -hmm. and try to find solutions to them. Mm -hmm. If not, then we will indeed continue the same process of racism, prejudice, and discrimination one segment of the of, of population feeling that they are dominant over another one, mm -hmm. things in commercials showing inadequate type of, of, of fairness in, in, in actions and, and, and inclusiveness. So this was important coming out of um, the great W.B. Du Bois when he said in the 19th century that the problem would be mm -hmm. that other color line. Mm -hmm. And we saw it in the 20th century. Now we're in the 21st century and the color line is still a problem. Mm -hmm. Now when we link that to social class, mm -hmm. we might find some, people might say, well look, you had an a African American president mm -hmm. and there are people in Congress and there are people that are doing well, mm -hmm. even us, professors that are institution of higher education, mm -hmm. but still I'm going back to the statistic that I started with. Mm -hmm. We make up about 6.5% of the population, about 40.2 are incarcerated. There's still a problem. 
when we see the reoccurring pattern of, pre of police brutality mm -hmm. and shootings because of the subliminal nature of how they look at a, a, sort of a mm -hmm. suspect Good. Good. and okay. think that they are um, something that needs to be shot and killed mm -hmm. versus just taken in. Mm -hmm. um, these are things that we have to be able to understand the history and how did those thoughts and patterns mm -hmm. subliminally get in our mindset mm -hmm. about that. This the, is especially yes. true when you start talking about uh, young African Americans, yes. you know, the young African American yeah. youth yes. uh, who face a real problem in terms of simply assimilating and being able to deal with some of the issues yeah. that many of us might have moved beyond. Yeah. Not that we solve them, yeah. but we've moved beyond, but they yeah. now face them. Uh, yes. uh, the uh, whole idea of uh, black lives make oh, uh, yeah. imported mm -hmm. and black life and all of those things. Yes. We've seen that yeah. and we've experienced that, but it might have been under a different name. Yes. And so the name might have changed, That's but right. the attitudes that many people have in reference yes. to the African American, especially the African American youth, yes. these things are still present in spite of uh, what we might call it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and I think that's absolutely right. And these are the indicators that some of that racism and prejudice and discrimination mm -hmm. still exists for a youth group to come up like Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, or other groups that mm -hmm. have emerged to try to solve some of the problems. Mm -hmm. um, I have a feeling, though, that we have a, even a, a deeper problem with a majority of people not being conscious mm -hmm. that some of the ills are still there. Mm -hmm. Again, that's why African American History Month is and, 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 and the and the history of African Americans mm -hmm. is so important to be in the curriculum mm -hmm. so people can understand that there is that importance that is there. Mm -hmm. And this can be done in literature class. If we're understanding African American literature in 1746 to 1865 mm -hmm. of the slave narrative, mm -hmm. very important information is there Good. in that context of that time. And then from 1865 to 1919, looking at the Reconstruction era, mm -hmm. let's talk about just literature that is present and out there. Then from 1919 to 1940 of the Harlem Renaissance period, very important information to know about those that contributed to scholarship mm -hmm. and to letters, meaning literature. Um, right now with fences out there that will fall into um, August Wilson and, and, and the great mm -hmm. literary pieces that he wrote. And now it was on stage and now in film. So mm -hmm. those are, are, are pieces that our younger people need to be familiar with, mm -hmm. but understand that contributions were made mm -hmm. even before slavery was over. Mm -hmm. Um, of the slave narrative that people wrote about their mm -hmm. experiences so that we could read about it and understand what was mm -hmm. going on during that time period. Mm -hmm. That led up to the whole civil rights movement of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, um, Thurgood Marshall, of course the great Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois that wrote The Souls of Black Folks mm -hmm. in 1903. Mm -hmm. Can't leave out Adam Clayton Powell and that whole movement, mm -hmm. Andrew Young. Mm -hmm. um, even um, Charles H. Wesley, the great historian uh, mm -hmm. that, that wrote about the history of the African American experience. Mm -hmm. These are people that have contributed to the social change that we still are able to thrive, made changes mm -hmm. for the betterment of others, but we have to know that history of them mm -hmm. so that we can continue to move onward and mm -hmm. upward. You know, Dr. Sanford, uh, I think that uh, the information that you're given now is essentially the information that the two of us especially yes. is familiar with. I mean, yes. we know all about this, but so many of our young people. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that there's been a, a movement on the part of many people to uh, think about uh, perhaps avoiding or omitting mm -hmm. this aspect of the African experience. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when you talk about the institution of slavery, mm -hmm. you've already indicated that we were there for more than 200 years. Yes. But in some of our textbooks, we don't even find that, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. And I think the things that we're talking about today is important from the uh, point of view of if people don't understand yes. some of these things, then they really don't understand what America is all about. Do you, yeah. That's my point of view. Th that's, it. To that's it. And I'm thinking to, to develop solutions for mm -hmm. problems that we have, mm -hmm. we have to do it with that theoretical framework of understanding the past. Mm -hmm. 
You know, some of the great social scientists have indicated that. Um, great C. Wright Mills and understanding the sociological imagination said we have to understand the past. We have to understand the biography and not only of the individual but of the country in order to see how things need to be corrected today. So yes, that's important and we have to come up with a few recommendations being inclusive with education from um, in family development from birth to age two, from two to the first grade mm -hmm. through elementary, junior high, high school, if the curriculum was inclusive, if, um, if, if fair and support was given to an inclusive educational system so everybody could understand everyone else's culture and history. Very good, and of course, Dr. Stanford, let me uh, thank you for bringing that excellent information by. And I think that the more you talk about some of these things, I think the more our uh, audience is familiar with that. And so we'll be, uh, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week to another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.